Okay, so let's work through the following questions. So the first question, what you're being asked to do in part one here, is just simplify these. Okay, so let's take the first expression. So we have 6a plus 3b minus 2a plus b. Okay, so what you've been asked to do is to simplify this. Now, in order to simplify it, you have to identify the like terms. Okay, so that's the first thing you want to do. So what are like terms? So if we have a look here, so we look at the first term. So remember, this whole thing here is called a term. You have the number part is called the coefficient and the variable part or the, the letter part is called a variable. So you have the coefficient and then the variable. Okay, and the whole thing is called a term. Both of these things together is called a term. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to identify, so if we take 6a, so are, are there any other terms here that have a as a variable? So we have this one, 6a, and then we have minus 2a. So these two are considered like terms. And because they're considered like terms, we can add and subtract them. Okay, so this is, the second part, so add or subtract like terms. And we'll just abbreviate it LT. So we can do that. So if we take the 6a minus 2a, so we'll just do it down here, leave a little bit of room. So if we have 6a, minus 2a. So if you have 6a's and you take away 2a's, you're going to have 4a's remaining. So these two, uh, when we when we subtract or when we collect them up, so we take 6a minus 2a, that simplifies then to 4a. Okay, so then we want to look for the next, the next term. So we have plus 3b and again we're looking at the variable part and we're seeing are there any other terms that have just b as a variable so if we look here we have b okay so we've 3b and then b plus b so again what we can do is we can collect these up so let's do that so we're going to have 3b plus b now, when, when you just see B on its own, like it's implied that that is 1B, okay? They don't write the one in front of it, but there is a one in front of it, okay? Um, and it's just it's just the way that they do it. They, they, you don't necessarily write in 1B, it's, but it is 1B. So what we have then is if we have three Bs and then we add 1B, we're going to have four Bs. So, that, so these two terms here will simplify to four B. And this is plus 4b. Okay, so you're going to have 4a, 4a plus 4b, 4a plus 4b. Okay, so that's the answer. That's your answer to part one. So the second one then is is very similar. So let's just. Have a look at the second one. So the second question, so part two. So again, we're just simplifying. So we have 6p minus 2q plus 4. minus 4p plus 3q minus 2. So that's our next part. And I just want to rub out just some of these calculations here so I can 
make room for the new ones. So again, if there's anything that you're unsure about, you know, pause the video and rewind and have a look. So again, the first thing we want to do is we want to identify the like terms. So identify the like terms. So we look at the first term and we can see here that the first term is 6p. Now it doesn't like the variables can come in all different letters. It can it doesn't have to be x or y. It can be p or q as we can see here as well. So we have 6p. So what we're doing is we're looking along this expression and we're looking for any other variables that have that are like and they'll be like if they have p as a variable. So we've 6p here, we have minus 4p. So these two terms are considered like terms. So what we can do is we can actually uh, collect these up. So let's do that. So we're going to have 6p minus 4p. So if you have 6p's and you have minus 4p's, you're going to have 2p's. Okay, so they, they simplify to that. So let's bring that down here. So that will simplify to 2p. So then again, we continue on looking for the like terms. So we have minus 2q here. Have we any other terms within this expression that is a like term to minus 2q? So you have this plus 3q. So these two are considered like terms. So what we can do is we can collect these up. So if you have minus 2q and you plus 3q, where are you going to end up? Now, if we think about this, like we can look at this on a number line. So imagine we have a number line like this. In the middle, we have zero. So we have one, two, three, four. So on the right hand side, we have the positive integers. Then on the left hand side, we have the negative integers. So we have minus one, minus two, minus three, and minus four. Okay. So what we can do is when we have, like when we're working with uh, negative integers like this, okay, so you take the, the number that you start off with, so it's minus, it's minus two. So we're starting off, let's say, here on the number line. Now, if it's plus three, so if it's plus, you're moving to the right. If it's negative, you're moving, you're moving to the left. So you're going to be moving this way, okay? And I'll move this out of the way now in a sec, but just to get your point. So we start off at minus two. So this is so this is where we start now, and then we're plus three, okay? So we're adding three. So if we're adding, if it's plus, we're moving to the right. So we're moving to the right uh, three places. So let's say we start off at minus two. So we go plus three. So this is one, two, and three. So where we end up then, we end up on positive one. So what this means here, so if we start off on minus two Q, so we're starting off on minus two, and we plus three Q, we're moving three places to the right, we end up on plus one Q. So it's going to be one Q. That's what it, that's what it will simplify into. So let's just, I just want to move this out of the way. So we can continue on with that. With the question. So that's just it's a simple way just to when you're working with integers like negative and minus numbers and positive numbers and um, you can use a number line like that to figure out what the answer should be. Um, so what we're saying then is that minus 2q and plus 3q, so they simplify to plus 1q. So that's plus 1q. Um, so that's that one. And then we finally, we have this last term. So we have plus 4 and we have minus 2. So again, like we can do it here on the number line. So let's say, so we we'll just, we can write it, just write in here. So we have four minus two, and we know that that's equal to, it's gonna be equal to two. But if we think about this on the number line, so let's say you start off at four, at positive four, which is on the right-hand side, 
and you minus two, so that means you're moving two places to the left. So it's one, two, and you're ending up here. So that's just another way, it's just a way to use, like it's straightforward when you're adding and subtracting positive integers. Um, but when you have, let's say, like a negative integer and you're, you start off with this side is bigger, it can be just difficult to try and figure out where exactly you end up on the number line. But that's one way to think about it. If you're adding, so you start off with this first number and that's where your point is on the number line. And then the second number, depending on the operation, if it's minus, you're moving over here, you're moving to the right. If it's plus, you're moving to the left. And you can use a number line like that to figure out where you are. So this then, what does it simplify into? So it's 2p plus 1q um, plus 2. So what we've done is we've taken this, we've taken this expression and we have simplified it to this. So that's that one. Okay, so let's move on. And I'm just going to get rid of this here as well. So again, just rewind, pause the video, go back over whatever you need to do. Um, just if you, know, if you need a little bit more time on a particular section. So we'll get rid of all this. And we'll continue on. And we'll get rid of these here. Okay, so the next question then. So we have this question here. So what expression does the question mark stand for in each of the shapes? So what expression does the question mark stand for in each of the shapes? So what you're basically trying to do here is you're trying to you're trying to find an express so it's at what express so you're trying to find an expression that represents the question mark here so if we look at this so the question mark represents one the length of the plank for example now if we look on the other side we have two expressions so we have x plus one sorry x plus two and then we have another expression five minus two x Now, if we, when we add these two together, that will represent the expression. Those combined will be equal to the expression that represents the question mark. So what we do is we add these together. So basically what we're doing is, again, we're simplifying. So we are. So let's have a look at this. So the first thing we do is we identify the like terms. So we have x here. Do we have any other x's? Yeah, we have minus x here. So we can simplify these. So we're starting off with x and we are minusing 2x. So again, this is similar to what we've been doing. So if you start off with positive 1, so you're starting here, so 1x, and then you are minusing 2x. So you're moving two places to the right. So you're going 1, 2. So you're ending up on minus 1. So x minus 2x is going to be equal to uh, minus x. So that's what those two will simplify into. So that's going to be minus x. So then we look at the next, the next expression or the next term in the expression. So we plus two and plus five. So again, we just add these up. So we have plus two plus five. So again, that's just two plus five, which is equal to plus seven. So again, that will just simplify to plus. So these two terms, will, when you add them together, they will simplify to plus seven. So it's plus seven. So what we can say is that this question mark here is represented by the expression minus x plus seven. And another way, like you could, you could as easily write this expression. You could just flip it around. So this, you could, you could write this as um, seven minus x. So you can, you can either way is fine. It means the same thing. Um, so that's your answer.
So that's the answer to, so that's part B, question one. So then if we do the same, so we're looking over here at this one. So we want to find out. So what we're saying is that we have K, K plus four, plus some expression. Okay, and we'll just, we'll actually make we use a question mark for that one. Uh, is equal to 10 minus 10 minus 3k. Okay, so we can just write it out like this based on um, the way the, the the way the question is laid out here. So what we're saying, so we're looking at this one here. So we're looking at this question here. So we have these two expressions up at the top. So we have k plus four plus some expression that we want to find out what it is, is equal to uh, 10 minus three k. So we could just let this represent the unknown expression that we're trying to find out. So what we can do then is, what we want to do is we want to try and get this, this um, unknown expression on its own. And how do we do that? So what we have to do is we have to get rid of everything around, around it. So if we have a look, what are what is around it? So we have this term, k, and we have this term, plus four. So if we think about k, so this is plus k, how can we get rid of plus k? Well, what we can do is we can minus, we can minus k. So if I minus k from here, plus k and minus k will cancel out. Now remember, when there's an equal sign, we have to, if we subtract uh, k, for example, from the left-hand side, we have to subtract k from the right-hand side. So we have to minus k from here. So what's gonna happen is, so this is plus k and this is minus k, these two will just cancel out. And then on this side, if we have minus k, and if we, so if on this other side, so let's do the first one. So we have plus k minus k. So that's going to just equal to zero. So it just cancels out. And then we have this one. So we have minus 3k minus k. What's that going to be equal to? So again, if we start off on minus three, so we're starting off here, and then we minus 1k, we're moving one place to the left. So we're going to end up on minus four. So minus 3k minus 3k minus k is equal to minus 4k. So this will simplify to minus 4k. So, so that's those two worked out. And now we have this plus four. So what we want to do is we want to work that one out. So in order to get rid of the plus four on the left hand side, we have to minus four from it. Again, if we minus four from this side, we have to minus four from this side. So again, if we work out what, this, what these calculations are, so we have plus four minus four is equal to zero. So these two will just cancel out. And then we have 10 minus four, which is equal to six. So these will simplify to six. So this is six. So what we're saying is that this is equal to six minus four K. Six minus four K. So what you can say is that within this expression up here, so it's going to be six minus four K. That's your answer. So this here is the answer to that. So that's that one. So again, just have a look at it. Uh, just make sure that you can follow along. Just pause the video, just rewind it and watch it again, just if there's anything there that you're unsure about. So essentially what we, what we just done there was that we read out the expression as it's mentioned within the question, and then we worked out this unknown here and what it is. And the unknown, what it works out at, the unknown expression, it's six minus four K. Okay, so let's continue on. I'm just gonna get rid of this. Um. 
Okay, so the next part then, so we're going to look at this, this question here. So let's just take a copy of this triangle and move it out here so we can work with it. So what does, what does it asking us to do? So in the given triangle, the two, mar the two marked sides are equal in length. So what, it, what sides it's talking about there. So this side of the triangle and this side of the triangle. And these symbols here, where you have two lines like that over two cross lines across the line, that indicates that the two lines are equal to each other. So those two lines are equal in length to each other. So in the given triangle, two marked sides are equal in length. Find the value for x. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find out what x is equal to. And then once you find out what x is equal to, you have to find out what the length of the three sides are. So what, what way, how do we do that? So we know that, so we know that let's say side A and side B are equal to each other. So what we can say is that A is equal to B. And what we can say is that A can be represented by the expression 3x minus one, and B can be represented by the expression so is equal to 2x plus 2. So that's, a, that's, like, that's the way we can write it like that. So now what we can do is we have, an, we have an expression here that we can work with. So we have 3x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 2. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to solve for x. So in order to do that, we have to get all of the terms, all of the x terms on the left hand side, and then we have to get the numbers on the right hand side. Okay, so how do we do that? So we have a look here. So we can see that we have plus 2x on this side. So we want to get rid of plus 2x. So if we have plus 2x, how do we get rid of it? We minus 2x, and that will be equal to zero. So if we want to get rid of the minus, or if we want to get rid of the plus 2x on the right hand side, we have to minus 2x from it. Now, if we minus 2x from this side, we have to minus 2x from this side as well. So what's going to happen is these two will cancel out. And then if we take 3x minus 2x, what's that going to be equal to? It's going to be equal, if we start off on 3, if we start at three and we minus two x, we're going to equal. We're going to end up on just one x. So this will simplify to x, and then we can just we can we can write we can write this what we have here. So we're doing these calculations and then we're moving down here. So it's going to be x minus one is equal to is equal to two. Now we're nearly there. So the idea is what we're trying to do is we're trying to get we're trying to get x on its own on the left hand side and then get the numbers over on the right hand side. So see the way we so the only number that's around this now is is minus one. So how do we get rid of minus one? So if we have so let's say if we have minus one, how do we turn minus one to zero? We add one. So if we're on minus one and we plus one, it's going to be equal to zero. So again. Like if you start off, let's say here on minus one, and then you plus one, you're going to move one place to the right, and you're going to land on zero. And um, so we have to, so we have to add one, add one on this side. If we add one on this side, we have to add one on this side. So what's going to happen is these two, so minus one plus one, these two will cancel out and two plus one, so two plus one is equal to three. So these two will be equal to three. And then th these will cancel out and all you're left with then is X on this side. So what we've worked out then is that X is equal to three. So that's the first part of the, that's the first part of the question done. Now the second part is then, it asks you to now, so it asks you, it asks you to find the total length of the three sides. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, so again, just if there's any part of this that you're unsure, just rewind the video, pause it and have a look. So I'm just going to move this out of the way so I can work on the next part. So what we've found out is that x is equal to 3. So now we can actually work out the length of each side of the triangle. So let's make this a little bit smaller. So we have a bit more space to work with. Uh, maybe I might just put this up here, out of the way. So the first part, what we've done is we calculated what the value for x is equal to. So what we have is we have this here. So x is equal to 3. So now what we want to do is we want to find out what, if we, so let's say we've side A, side B, and then we'll just call this side C. So what will side A, so what's side A plus B plus C? What's that going to be equal to? So what we do is we substitute in the value that we have for x. So let's write, so, so A, so let's say, or we can, so the formula for A, or the expression for A is, 3x minus 1, so that, that's for a, side a, so side b then um, is 2x plus 2, and then let's say side c is 3x minus 4. So these are the, the three sides. So what we can do then is we can substitute in the value, remember x is equal to 3. So what we can do is we can substitute in the values for x. So this is going to be equal to three times, and we put in our value for x. So the value for x is three minus one. And then we work that out. So it's three times three is nine, minus one is eight. Okay, so the length of side a is eight. Then if we go down here, let's just do it in a little bit of a different color. So what does this simplify into? So again, we substitute in the value for x, which is three. So this becomes two times the value for x, which is three, so it's two times three, plus two is equal to, so what's that equal to? So two times three, so two multiplied by three is six, plus two is eight. Okay, so we can see side a is equal to eight, side b is equal to eight. So now we work out what side c is equal to. So side c, let's use a different color just to keep things interesting. So side c, so it's going to be equal to three times, and then we substitute in the value for x, which is three. So it's three multiplied by three, minus four. So what's that equal to? So three times three is nine, and then nine minus four is equal to five. So what we can say is that a, a is equal to eight, b is equal to eight, and then c is equal to five. So we work these out here. So then a plus b plus c, when we add up the lengths, is going to be equal to 8 plus 8 plus 5, which is equal to, when we add these up, it's going to be equal to, so 8 and 8 is 16, plus 5 is 21, so it's equal to 21. So your answer then, for this uh, last part, C, is equal to 21. So that's how you, that's how you work out those. Um, so that's that's how you work out those those type of questions. So again, just have a look. Make sure that you're able to do these. Uh, pause the video if you need to go back and have a look. And um, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, thank you guys for listening.